Hey, how's it going? Okay, so let's review some keywords together. I know that a lot of you struggle with looking at keywords and understanding your Google Analytics data. And so this is something I recommend doing at least once a quarter to improve the content that already exists on your site and to get new ideas for content. So step by step, this is what you're gonna be learning um, in this video. And um, so let's look at your Google Analytics data. Let's look at your Search Console gate data and let's just make an action plan for how you can get your site to rank better, not just by creating new content, but by improving old content. And um, I've been really working behind the scenes and excited about my new version of the Traffic Boost program, which is my beginner's email course that is 13 days of really juicy information of how you can start doing SEO. And so if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you check it out um, and you get on the waiting list because I am making some changes and I'm gonna be relaunching the course um, in a week or so. So you can do that by going to bit.ly slash TB, traffic boost, TB dash waiting list. I'll have a link in the notes below. Um, and so there you're gonna get on the waiting list. You'll be one of the first to learn when the course goes live. And you're gonna also get a search persona worksheet, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. So the email course, the Traffic Boost email course is daily lessons with down to, down to earth information um, that really just gets you actioning your SEO um, without taking tons and tons of time, right? So I want you to just start getting some traction. It can be easy, it can be fun, doesn't need to be a big deal. So yes, again, get on the waiting list. You can also go to my website, digitalbloomiq.com and the, ta the, the, the navigational announcement at the top also has a waiting list link. All right, so the blog post I'm gonna be walking you guys through today is my Keywords for Health and Wellness blog post. And this is a blog post that I've been keeping my eye on in the last couple months because I've noticed that it's been getting traction and so it's really exciting um, just like, you know, planting a garden with keywords, you're planting different seeds um, and you're seeing which ones are blooming and which ones are budding faster than others. So I recommend, you know, especially if you're starting out, but even if you're farther along in your SEO journey, you're always planting new seeds with keywords and, um, and you're just looking at, okay, this one, you know, this one's growing faster, this one's slower, but it's still getting traction. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I'm reviewing this specific blog post and looking at what keywords are doing well and how to action that, right? So the first step is actually um, just pulling out your tools. So you're gonna pull out your keyword planner document. I'm gonna show that to you in a second. Um, you're gonna open up the blog post itself because you, know, you wanna look at it. Um, and you also wanna have, if you're like me, a notebook or a Google Doc because ideas are gonna come up and you're gonna wanna write them down. So if you're a paper person, do that. If not, a Google Doc is totally, totally fine. And, um, and yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna pull out the blog post that we wanna specifically focus on. And this is something that maybe you've had your eye on for a while. Um, maybe you have some you know specific reason behind wanting to pick this blog post but it should be something you're interested in and something that's connected with something you're selling in the near future. So I have my blog post here. I have my uh, keyword planner. So this is a really important document and I'm not gonna be showing you all of this document because this is actually one of the features of the Traffic Boost program. I give you access to this template and if you're not a big um, spreadsheet person, you can totally replicate this in any other um, place that you feel more comfortable. But this spreadsheet gives us a place to track our keywords and track progress. So I'm gonna be showing you how I'm gonna do that. So right off the bat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at um, the blog post and I'm gonna pull out my notebook that I have here and I'm gonna just look at any like initial ideas. It's been a while since I've looked at this blog post co closely but I already have some ideas of things I can do to improve this. So just having fresh eyes is already a benefit of looking at the blog post and just getting a sense of like, what can I do to make this better? 
Um, I'm also gonna spend a little bit of time, I don't have too much information in here, but usually, um, because this is the first time I've done a formal review of this, of this blog post, um, I created a new tab here and I, you know, set this is the primary keyword that I've been focusing on. This gives me some, some information in the future. I would have a couple other keywords here. I would have some notes. And so this just gives me some awareness of like, okay, this is what I've been doing so far with this blog post. Right, right, right. This is what I did. Um, and so tracking this just creates a whole other intention behind uh, keyword research and, and blog planning and everything. So I'm going to be adding some keywords to, to here. So, so yeah, so that's the first step, kind of like get your footing, look at what's, what's doing well right now and just get a sense of like, okay, this is the blog post. Let's see what we can do. So the next step is we're going to be opening up our Google analytics. Um, and if you don't have your Google Analytics set up, I have a blog post on how to do that and I'll link that in the show notes. But we want to look at, you know, how is this blog post performing today? And um, again, just take some notes and think about, you know, what could, what could we improve here? So you are going to go to your Google Analytics again. If you don't know if you set it up or not, just Google Google Analytics. Uh, data and you'll find the, the sign in and you just sign in. And again, the setup is separate um, and you're going to go to your website um, traffic, go to the left side menu behavior, site content and all pages. So what this report does is it tells us how people are using our site, what pages are most popular um, and just the behavior. I guess that's like the best way to put it. And so I'm going to focus specifically on this blog post. So I can actually click and get a filtered view of this report. And I highly recommend this because people get overwhelmed. There's so many numbers. I'm really used to the numbers because I look at data almost every day. But for most of you, maybe you're not even looking at your Google Analytics very often. That's totally fine. Um, and uh, so it's just like a lot of numbers and it looks really icky and technical. So just clicking on that filters that report. The next thing I recommend is going to the date range. So you can see here um, by default, it will only show you the last week of data. And I'm actually going to pull out the last three months and I want to see how much data I have there. So this is like a nice amount of data. If you have less data, you can actually open it up to six months potentially a year. It depends on what your blog post, you know, how invested you are in this blog post. But uh, I think three to six months is, is ideal because it gives you a nice chunk of data to work with. And um, that's why you should get your Google Analytics set up as soon as you can, because you're going to start collecting data right from the very beginning. So what am I going to do here? So I can see that this blog post hasn't had much variation in the last three months. If there was some variation, I would go back and look at, you know, what did I launch? What did I um, publish, you know, in terms of my podcast and that sort of thing and see if there's some other way that I've been pulling in traffic. Um, I could look at the page views. I mean, that's that number could be interesting or not. Um, but what I really am interested in are two other metrics bounce rate and average time on page. So bounce rate is basically, let's go through a bounce. A bounce is when someone visits your site, visits the first page of your site and then leaves. So they're essentially bouncing, right? So they're, they're coming to your site, they're looking at one page and then they're leaving. So the bounce rate is the percentage of people who do this. So um, they look at one page and they leave. So in general, we're trying to aim for a lower bounce rate, but it's very um, typical for people to leave, you know, especially if you're designing a landing page or a sales page. Some pages actually have a high bounce rate um, naturally because they're a page that links to like a payment processor. So in that case, a high bounce rate might actually be a good thing. Um, so in this blog post, I do actually link to Teachable to another course I have. So that could be accounting for the fairly high bounce rate, but I still think I could do a better job at bringing this down. So what are some ways I could bring down the bounce rate? I could link to other areas of my website, which I was looking, I haven't really done that correctly. Okay, so here I pulled up the, the blog post. Um, you know, I don't have that many links to other blog posts. So that's definitely something I could improve on. 
Um, I could uh, link to my services page or my about page. So that's definitely a sign for me that I could improve the bounce rate um, and still have people sign up for my email list. And then average time on page is average time on page. So it's like, how much time are people spending? I'm really happy with this. You know, we are aiming for people to be spending over two to three minutes is already like a lot. So that really tells me people are spending time reading this and understanding it. Um, I have some exercises in here. So people are probably keeping this open as they're going and doing some of the exercises. So I think that this time on page is great. I could also improve it. So you have a couple options here. You could go back and note these numbers in your keyword strategy doc or um, you can actually just rem like set a date to look at this again and then do a comparison. So Google does allow you to compare date ranges, which is really great. So here I can compare to previous periods. So it will just grab the last three months and then I can see if there are any variations. Um, and you can see that there is actually, I've been you know slowly growing more traffic. That's why I'm interested in this blog post. Um, and the time on page has gone down. So that's not great, but that could just be because I have a little bit more traffic. The bounce rate has gone down as well, which is positive. So this is a really great, and, and in terms of looking at page views, I do recommend looking at comparative numbers instead of isolated numbers, which don't really tell us that much. So again, I'm not just gonna like, oh, that's interesting and forget about all this. I'm gonna make a really clear action plan of like, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna add those links. So I, I go in and I brainstorm the actions. Um, and then later I actually, you know, make sure that those things get done and they're like in my calendar, they're blocked off. Cause otherwise, you know, I forget, we all forget we have busy lives. Um, and even me being an SEO expert, um, you know, I have to really remember to tend to my own website. I love doing it, but there's a lot of stuff happening. So don't forget to take action. So the next report I'm going to look at is a search console report called performance. And so here we're getting more into keywords. Again, if you don't have the search console set up, I'll include a link to a video where I show you how to set it up and the earlier, the better. It's really, really great to have this tool. It's free. Both these tools are free. Uh, and so what the search console tells us is like how Google is viewing our sites and what keywords we're naturally targeting. So it's one of the most powerful and free keyword tools you can have out there. And even like super advanced SEO experts who pay money for other SEO tools, they still use the search console. Uh, okay. So what are we going to do here? We're going to go to our performance report. So usually you might land on something like this when you open up your search console. Um, and so you're going to click on the left side menu, go to performance and right off the bat, you can see that this keyword is the one that is getting the most traction. So if I go to my keyword doc, I'll see that I had initially, um, targeted wellness keywords, but now I am actually doing keywords for health and wellness, which is fairly aligned with the initial keyword as well. So all these keywords are similar, but it's, it's important to look at them and to look at them clearly. So one thing you could do just to filter this report, because you can see here that I've got um, a couple other keywords around my brand and my name, I can filter by going here to the top where it says new and there's like a plus and I can go to query and query is just a search. So I can actually hear, um, filter and put like health and see what keywords come up. So there it's like filtering quite a bit, um, on that keyword. Another option is I can filter by the page. So again, because we're focusing just on this keyword, um, keywords for health and wellness page, um, I can just click here and it will automatically um, create this filter. You'll see at the top, when you click the URL under the pages tab, it will now filter by the exact URL. And I'm going to take out the other filter just to open up to the full range of keywords. So I'll click again, back to the tab with queries and here I can see all the keywords. But what do I want to do here? So I, yeah, obviously it's great to see like the top keywords. Um, and you know, where I'm getting my clicks. So clicks are literally people who are finding me on the page on Google and clicking. Um, and so this is the last three months of data. 
If you have less data, you can open this up. And if you have a lot of data, you can make it um, less time. So it just depends on how high trafficking your site is. Something else that I think is interesting is clicking here to average position. So position is where you are in the search results. So if you are in position three, just like my keywords for health and wellness is, that means that I'm on the first page, but I'm in the third, you know, approximately the third position. So in general, we have 10 search positions per page. So up until position 10, you're on page one. And then when you're on, you know, position 11, you're page two. So we're trying to aim for page one. You know, most searches happen there or, or most clicks happen there. And impressions just means that you're showing up in the search results. So every time that your blog post gets loaded in the search results, you get an impression. So it's really interesting. So this one, keywords for health and fitness, actually I get more impressions and I get a sense that that keyword is probably getting more, more traffic. Um, I am getting some clicks, but since I'm on position nine, I'm more at the bottom of the first page. So there could be a strategic um, decision there to change this blog post to health and fitness or which I feel like this one second option makes more sense. Uh, I can actually create a new blog post and maybe just have it be keywords for fitness. Um, since I am seeing a couple other um, kind of like fitness keywords there. But overall, I think this keywords for health and wellness is interesting for me to look at since I am getting the highest amount of clicks. Now I'm probably naturally already targeting this, but I'm going to add it to my keyword doc. Um, and then what I'll do here is I'll actually just put that, like, this is the date that I checked it in. And the status is just to say that, you know, I'm using it. Sometimes I'll put like, um, I'll put other statuses like to review or, you know, potential. So again, for this, uh, keywords for health and fitness, this is interesting. I might put it maybe down near the bottom or I might put like keyword, I have another tab that's like keyword ideas, so new content. So right now I'm just kind of like staying open and reviewing. The other one that looks really interesting is the health keywords. So again, maybe I choose, okay, I'm going to change this whole blog post to health keywords, or maybe I'm gonna create new content and target them separately. Now I have to be careful if the keywords are too similar, they're gonna to start to compete against themselves in the search uh, results. So I don't want that to happen, but um, it definitely could be an option. Yeah, so what's gonna happen next? So I've got some keywords, I've got some ideas, I've got the updated uh, keyword planner. So now I'm going to, again, set aside time to actually make these changes on my website. Um, and so one of the changes that might happen is that because I like this keywords for health and wellness, um, and that's doing well, I'm going to go back and just make sure that both health and wellness, um, cause I think I, I leaned more towards wellness. Um, I'll change this title again. I probably won't change the URL since I would need to create a redirect here. I see it here, you know, I'll go back, check the images to make sure those are all, um, with the alt text and the keyword. And um, I think mostly this blog post, I'm going to um, restructure it a little bit and add a little bit more, more information. Right now, I think it's got a lot of useful stuff, but I think I could add like a little bit more. So I might add some more screenshot I ideas. Maybe I'll do like a test run of the fitness keywords and I'll add like some examples for fitness, or maybe I'll create a section that's like fitness, health, uh, wellness, and different examples. And like I said before, I'll probably include more links to other blog posts. So there you have it. That's how I review keywords and I'll see if I can do another one of these videos in a couple months to show you the progress of this. I've actually been showing you guys the progress of this specific blog post because I think it's been interesting to see how it's grown. And um, I think that there are a couple other episodes that you might benefit from on the Digitally Overwhelmed podcast. So I have another episode that's specifically about how to add keywords and it's the high level version. So it's a really quick 
uh, training where I show you where to add keywords. And that's episode 133 of the podcast. Um, and then I also have another episode that's also a video episode where I show you how I review my own site. And this is something a lot of people ask me about, um, you know, just like understanding how your site is doing. And it's kind of similar to this episode because I, I run through specific reports in Google Analytics and then how to take action. And you guys are like doing it with me. Uh, so that is episode 128 of the podcast. Um, and you can also get the video version on my website. Uh, so yeah, so, and again, if you're interested in taking the concepts to the next level as a beginner without the tech lingo, definitely check out the Traffic Boost email course and you can get on the waiting list again by going to bit.ly slash tb dash waitlist and uh, you can grab your search persona worksheet while you're at it. All right, have a great day. Talk soon.